All right, we're back with the Chrysler M5 transmission. I decided to strip it apart further. I got the input shaft out. The input, the output shaft is there. They're connected together here. Here's our counter shaft gear, or cluster gear, and counter shaft. This is the counter shaft here. And the housing, of course. This is the rear of the transmission here. Now, the question was around what retains the counter shaft in the transmission. Well, if you look here, there's a keyway. And there's a, a notch in the housing there for the keyway. It doesn't really retain the shaft. That's just, I think, your stopping point, I would think. This is, this, the shaft seems to be somewhat tapered, or maybe it's the housing. I can slide it in, all the way in so far. I should put my, my keyway in there. I got one here. And then turn it around to index the keyway. You know, you have this set up properly. Then it gets stiff. I can't push it anymore. Because at this end, there's an interference fit. I can't get through there. In order to get that shaft in now, I've got to hit it with a hammer. If I line up that keyway right there, maybe I'll just grab a hammer and give it a tap. It's an interference fit. But like I said, I'm not sure the keyway is really retaining anything, but that's it. It's in. You can see the keyway there. So these are prone to leaking in this area. So maybe before you tap that shaft in, maybe we could put some kind of sealant on the shaft. This is the reverse uh, gear shaft here. I pulled reverse gear out. Same thing. There's a, there's a keyway in there as well. And you just tap it back in place with the keyway in. And there it goes. You need a puller to get that out. I actually used a slide hammer to get it out. Reverse gear is this little gear right here. It goes on that little shaft. So, I cannot slide this. It's tight. It's a press fit. Interference fit on this end over here. I tried pushing the axle in from, or the counter shaft in from this way. I could not. It has to go in from the rear towards the front. And then it's retained here at this end. Counter shaft does not turn. It's fixed. The cluster gear here, which sits on the counter shaft, does the spinning. All these little needle bearings are inside of there, in this area and in here. This is a needle spacer here. And that spins inside on the counter shaft. So I don't, I don't really recommend you tear apart a tranny here. This is not the cleanest environment. But this is an old broken tranny that I was given as a spare. And I really just used it for a learning aid. I learned a lot about these transmissions because I literally knew nothing about these transmissions. And they boggled my mind. I did a lot of reading and a lot of researching. And I learned a lot. Taking it apart it really adds up. Thrust washers aren't worn bad actually. They're in decent shape. This one goes on this end of the counter shaft here. Sits at the front of the tranny. This one goes at the back. They're in decent shape. And there's one other thing that people don't maybe grasp in these transmissions. I'm going to try and explain it. When this counter shaft is spinning, when you're in first or third gear, there's no holdback. The engine can't hold back the, um, the axles. You can't use it for braking, dynamic braking on a hill. The axle will drive the car right through because this gear spins in one direction. So when you're pushing this shaft, the power comes through the back, down through this gear shaft here, hooks up to this gear here on the cluster gear and pushes the tranny and it just spins. But when you go to fourth gear or second gear, you slide a locking collar over and what you do is you lock this gear to the, um, it locks to this gear set here on the input pinion. And it can't turn in that direction. See, I can turn it this direction, but I cannot turn it that direction. It's locked. The whole shaft spins. That's what holds you back. It's a pretty cool little invention. And what it is, is there's, a, there's a, a needle roller set inside of here. It's on a ramp. I don't know if you can see it or not. 
but there's little ramps. In, uh, maybe you can see one right there. When I spin this, the rollers walk up the ramp and they lock. However, it can spin the other way freely because this gear will spin freely on the rollers, but in the other direction, the rollers get pushed out and lock the shaft. See the little space in there? The roller can sit all of a sudden, it lifts up. It's pretty neat. Pretty cool little invention. These trannies are something. This is the thrust washer there. Brass thrust washer that sits on here. Quite a bit of wear on that. You see how it's eccentric wear there? It's not even on all sides. I'm thinking that might be a, a failing part in one of these transmissions in the future. Sits on there like that. Like I said, turns that direction freely, so you go the other way. Oh, oh, oh. All right, that's all I'm talking about today. A lot of fun taking this tranny apart. I don't think I'm gonna rebuild it or anything. Last thing I'd like to get out is the cylinder, the hydraulic cylinder for shifting. It's behind this plate. I don't have a tool to get it apart. I think you need to, you do need a special tool for that. But you can really see it well now. This is the shifting fork here. And there's your shaft for your piston. This is the pistons inside of here. Oil is forced into this cylinder and that pushes forward and it slides the gear and gauges the shift. Or it's not very bright in there. Not the best. I don't really edit these videos and I don't uh, always come prepared. I just talk. And I kind of rant sometimes or ramble, but I think you get the point. There you go. There's your Chrysler M5 tranny video number two.